All right, uh, welcome to your video lecture on the uh, music in psychosocial training and counseling, also known as MPC. Um, you should uh, maybe even have open with you the uh, Handbook of Neurologic Music Therapy, Chapter 27, um, which is a good thing to have with you, and also some of the parts of, um, of the Uncafer and Talp text on uh, the music therapy and treatment of adults with mental disorders. Um, in particular, part three, um, where they get into the taxonomy of clinical music therapy. So the definition of uh, music um, psychotherapy, music in psychosocial training and counseling, I know I'm going to say that wrong a few times because there, there's the old name which is just drilled into my head. So we'll just call it MPC. So the uh, definition of MPC is, is pretty broad. Um, if you look at how it's uh, written in the book, um, it might use guided music listening, musical role playing, expressive improvisation, compositional exercises, um, and it could address a variety of goals, primarily mood control, um, affective expression and identification, cognitive coherence, reality orientation, appropriate social interaction. Um, so anything you kind of think of in that psychiatric domain, it's likely that um, some form of MPC can be used in there. So it focuses on training um, or counseling or both. Um, so training meaning kind of teaching skills, um, practicing skills, it might be practicing identifying um, emotions, it might be practicing social skills. Um, counseling will go more into kind of insights into um, self. So why do I have trouble um, with socializing or why am I depressed or anxious? Um, and you may have uh, both of those. It kind of all depends on your client, um, what level they're capable of, um, and also your training because obviously um, it takes a lot more training to really delve into those insights and know how to navigate um, with somebody, whereas it takes less training to uh, just do some sort of activity that's going to help them practice some skills that will help um, kind of give them some skills to take out into the world, um, but not necessarily delve into why these problems are happening. Um, most of us are not necessarily uh, extensively trained in verbal processing, and so um, when you go out there into your uh, your clinical work and practicum and internship and beyond, um, just be careful not to open that can of worms um, if you're not able to shut it. So um, just remember your limitations. Also remember the limitations of your client. Um, sometimes really delving into insights is not necessarily recommended for uh, people with various psychiatric conditions. Um, so there's three primary goal areas in MPC. And that's the affect identification and expression, mood control, and social competence and self-awareness. And we'll go through a lot of these um, in class and in this lecture. Lots of different populations. Um, obviously, this is a wide, wide range of populations. And this is not even necessarily uh, anywhere close to an exhaustive list. So I'll let you read these. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about different ways this could be used. Keep in mind, it could be contraindicated for um, some conditions where really their impairments are not going to um, allow them to benefit from the kind of insight that they might gain. So how does MPC work? How does music function within um, this uh, psychosocial training? Um, well, there's a lot of theories behind this. Um, one of the ways that it functions is that it can access emotions more directly than other methods. Um, so talk therapy is great for a lot of insights, um, but it doesn't necessarily always get you right to the emotions. Um, there's a lot of other creative arts therapy and some of them are really good at accessing emotions. Uh, music does kind of have a special place for many people as far as 
the emotional content of various songs and the meaning, the emotional meaning that's behind those songs. Um, it activates mood centers in the brain, um, and not just those mood centers, but also at the same time cognition, perception, physiology, memory, behavior. It alters all of those things, so you're really, it, it's a holistic uh, medium for therapy. The uh, the theory, the associative network theory of mood and memory. So this is a theory uh, presented by Bauer, um, which is really that our mood and our memory are closely linked. Um, and often this can create these kind of cycles um, that when we're in a, a depressed mood, we are more likely to remember things that have a negative connotation or are depressing or seem hopeless. Um, and those things can actually enhance then that depressed mood, which then can enhance the memory and so on. Likewise, um, when you're in a good mood, you're more likely to remember the things that are positive. And, um, and it's, it, it can be an upward spiral. And this has actually been shown in a lot of studies um, where, where when people are induced into a certain moods um, and read certain lists of words, um, they're more likely to remember more of the words that are associated with that mood they're in already. Um, so they have a, uh, a list of positive and negative words that are all mixed together. Um, and if they've been induced into somewhat of a negative mood, they will remember more of the negative words and not the positive ones, and vice versa if they're in a positive mood. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of you can, can uh, think of times when you're, you know, down or just in a bad mood and just nothing, you, you can't remember anything going right or things like that. It's hard to think about how, you know, things are going well. And um, hopefully we've all also had the opposite experience um, where you're in a positive mood and um, you can think of all sorts of good things that you're grateful for and whatnot. Um, one of the roles that music plays in there is that it can be really difficult sometimes if, if to, to access this network through the memory portion and through the cognition portion. Um, so if your thinking is stuck in this negative cycle, it can be really hard to change the thinking. Um, but it can sometimes be easier to access the mood um, through music, through activities, and enhance the mood, which then has an influence on the thinking. Um, so finally, music activities, therapeutic activities through music, offer opportunities for social learning and the practicing and behaviors, and that kind of goes towards that third goal area of the social competence and self-awareness. So here are your uh, three levels of music therapy. This is explained at several points in the chapter in the Handbook of Neurologic Music Therapy, but it's also in the Unkefer and Talt text, and we're going to go more into those on the next slide. But here you have them uh, just to kind of get a quick overview. Therapy in the psychiatric setting can elicit really powerful experiences, and once again, not to open that can of worms you can't shut. All of these protocols that they go in into the handbook are, are, you can't take them out of context. All of this happens within a the context of a therapeutic relationship. Um, that's really true of all therapy, but it's especially true here in the psychiatric um, psychosocial training um, because, you know, probably there's better outcomes. If you're doing physical rehab, um, you're probably going to get better outcomes if you have a good therapeutic relationship with your physical therapist or your MT. Um, but you're probably going to do fine even if you don't. It's really about going in, doing the reps, doing the right things. Um, but really, this is such more deeper work. Um, there's not as clear-cut uh, kind of protocols, and so really you have to know your clients well, and they have to trust you in order to open up, and they have to feel safe. And so really all of these protocols are all based on the assumption that you have that relationship. Um, and of course, all of these protocols need to be selected and adapted according to your client's needs. 
So here we are, those levels of MT. And this is uh, alluded to in the handbook of neurologic music therapy, but then it also is um, really expressed more uh, uh, more detail in the reading in page 181 of the Unkefer and Tout uh, book. So there's supportive or activities-oriented therapy. And we've talked some in NMT how we want to get away from activity-oriented therapy, and yet here I'm saying that there's this level of MT that is activities-oriented. Um, this is really indicated for short-term acute clients or also sometimes chronic um, long-term clients, uh, perhaps with schizophrenia, who are not really going to benefit from insight therapy. So what it is is really any gains are through active involvement and not processing. Um, the verbal processing is going to be a really small part of your therapy and really all of these activities are based on participating and practicing healthy behavior. Uh, so it's still not activities based where you, in the sense that you're going to be just selecting activities and letting everybody, you know, participate because this is a great activity. You still are selecting activities that are uh, meaningful and, and, and really specific and directed at your client's needs. But there's not going to be much uh, beyond the actual activity and maybe a little bit of, of reflection on it, um, maybe a little bit of reflection on what just happened and um, not so much into what they're going to do, setting goals, um, and certainly not delving into any personal pieces in there. In the next level up, re-educative and insight and process-oriented um, this is, you're starting to get into looking at what's going on. Um, verbal processing becomes more important, um, but it's still focused very much on the here and now. Um, it's focused on setting goals, um, identifying and working on plans to, to change maladaptive behavior, problem solving, um, and there's not really any probing for unconscious conflict. Um, so you're not going to go too much into any deep feelings or memories or, or things like that. Um, and then finally, reconstructive, um, analytically and catharsis-oriented music therapy. Um, this is where you're going really deep. Usually you need advanced training for this, um, uh, some sort of counseling uh, training, psycho psychology training. Um, and, and really, it's trying to uncover, relive, and resolve subconscious conflict. Um, this can be done through a number of different means, through songwriting, through uh, improvisation, where you are musically recreating certain experiences, um, through music listening and, and using music to elicit images and feelings that are um, in the subconscious. Uh, so that's a very kind of advanced, deep level of MPC there. And then here, I'm not going to go into depth of any of these protocols. We'll do more of that in class, but just kind of a list to, so you can see the wide variety of different things that can be called um, that, that really fall into the umbrella of MPC. So unlike some of the other interventions we're going to learn this semester, um, or have learned, you need to be more specific when you say, okay, this is uh, music and psychosocial training and counseling, well then what? Are you um, working on modifying arousal? Are you working on uh, mood vectoring or mood induction using the ISO principle? Um, are you working on empathy? Are you working on uh, identifying a continuum of emotions. Um, so there's not any one, you can't just say MPC and be done. You really have to identify what your goals are. So these are some protocols that are uh, related to affect and mood. And here's some protocols that are related to social confidence and self-awareness. Um, again, 
you can see how wide this variety is. Um, notice a lot of these have to do with songs, songwriting, song discussion, um, using songs about grief or self or something that's needed. Um, also a lot of improvisation and musical role playing. Um, so there's, there's just a wide variety. Um, I really encourage you to read through in depth um, a number of different protocols in the handbook um, because they really do provide some insight about what this looks like in practice and we'll do more of that in class. So I look forward to um, practicing all this with you and hearing any questions you have in class.